launch marks our second Falcon Heavy flight in just 11 weeks. And for those of you following along, a lot will happen in the first four minutes of flight. And there you can see on your screen that the clamp arms have begun to open. Once those are fully open, the TE can begin to retract away from the vehicle. Now again, a lot will happen in the first four minutes of flight. First, we will light the two side boosters, followed by, booster lock float is complete. followed by the center core. And about 40 seconds after liftoff, we will decrease power on the two side boosters to prepare for max Q, after which Falcon Heavy will throttle back up to full power on the side boosters. Now, two minutes into flight, we PY will- booster lock float is complete. Two minutes into flight, we will again reduce thrust on the two side boosters, this time to decrease forces on the rocket structure as the vehicle is now much lighter, but thrust is constant. At two and a half minutes into flight, we will fully turn off the side boosters with booster engine cutoff, or what we call BECO, the pneumatic separation Center system. Core lock load complete. Getting good calls, I'm gonna pause for, for each one of those. The pneumatic separation system on the center core then unlocks the two side boosters and pushes them away. Now, once we, clear, once we are clear of the side boosters, the center core throttles up to full power until the center core shuts down with main engine cutoff, or what we call MECO, and then separates from the second stage around the four minute mark. And as a reminder, we will not be attempting to recover the center core today as the mission requires more performance more performance. Now, for those of you looking closely, this is why you don't see any landing legs or grid fins on the center core. And from this point on, very similar to Falcon 9, to a Falcon 9 mission, the side boosters will be making their way back down to Earth for recovery. The fairing will separate and the second stage will take the USSF 67 payload out into space. Now, as a reminder, at the request of our customer, we will not be showing views of the payload, so we will be ending the webcast just after our side Stage boosters. Two, lock load complete. Just after our side boosters make their way back down to land on landing zone one and landing zone two, a little after the T plus eight minute mark into flight. And as we've mentioned before, launch is hard and Falcon Heavy is no exception. We are essentially counting down three rockets simultaneously. So our team is going to be conservative in case anything pops up in the last couple minutes of the countdown. Now, if for some reason we don't launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. And we did also hear those call outs that propellant loading is now complete on Falcon Heavy. So we are now going to vent out the liquid oxygen line on the transporter erector. Next up will be Falcon in Falcon Heavy in startup. And that will be at the T minus one minute mark. That's where the internal flight computers take over the launch countdown. Falcon Heavy is in startup. And great news, Falcon Heavy, now in startup. We're now just waiting for the final call from the launch director. This is the mission director, go for launch. And excellent news, all systems are go for launch of Falcon Heavy with USSF 67. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, engine full power, and lift off of USSF 67. Go Falcon Heavy, go Space Force. are nominal. T 
plus 40 seconds into flight under the power of 5 million pounds of thrust. Power and telemetry nominal. Falcon Heavy is headed to space. Now we did throttle down the engines around the T plus 40 second Vehicle mark. supersonic. In preparation for max Q. Max Q. And great call out there that we have passed through max Q. That's the largest mechanical stress on the vehicle on ascent. And incredible, incredible views there on your screen. Falcon Heavy in flight. Now next events coming up will be booster engine cutoff or BECO, followed by separation of the side boosters and followed by their side booster boost back burns. And then will be center core main engine cutoff or what we call MECO. And those events coming up here just under a minute away. That will be BECO. That's where the booster, the side booster's engines will shut down. The center core will push those side boosters away from the vehicle. Then those two side boosters can begin to make their way back down to earth with their boost back burns. And on your right hand screen, you could see the views from each of those side boosters. Really incredible views here. Again, we will have Biko, side booster, boost back burn, followed by main engine cutoff of the center core here in just a few seconds. Side booster separation. Side core booster startup. Incredible views. We just had Beco and separation of the side boosters. And you can see on your left hand screen that the side boosters have lit back up. They are now in their boost back burn, making their way back down to earth. Now those side boosters are returning to Florida under the power of three engines. That's three of the nine M1D engines. Next up will be the conclusion. Next up will be the conclusion of those side booster boost back burns, followed by Miko on the center core, as well as stage separation of the center core and the second stage, and then SES one or second stage engine start one. Now, as I mentioned previously, per the request of our customer, we won't be showing second stage views after SES one. And additionally, our center core or stage one is expendable today, so we will not be attempting to recover that vehicle, but we should have some great views like we are seeing right side now. Core, boost back, shut down. We should have some great views of those side boosters touching down for landing. We go. Stage separation confirmed. And next startup. And excellent views. We had the Stage shut one FTS is say, has saved. We did have the shutdown of the boost back burn. We did have the shutdown of the boost back burns on the side boosters as well as Miko on that center core and stage separation. We are waiting for confirmation of a call out of the fairing separation. All vehicles are following nominal trajectories. So currently stage two is still making its way to its targeted drop off orbit while the boost, the side boosters are making their way back down to land. 
And these side boosters have another burn coming up. That will be the entry burn. That will be three of nine M1D engines reigniting. That helps to slow the boosters down in preparation or as they re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. We got some views here from those side boosters there on your screen. Now, at the time of separation, the side boosters were traveling slow enough to turn around and make their way back to land to our side-by-side -side landing pads. If we have successful landings today, we'll mark the 163rd and 164th landing of an orbital class rocket. As I mentioned earlier, the center core it will be expendable, and we are not attempting to recover it today. Side core entry burn startup. And there you can see on your screen the entry burns for these side boosters have begun. They're just about 12 seconds long. PY FTS has saved and NY FTS has saved. And the entry burns for both side boosters have now concluded. Now, next up will be the final burn for each of these side boosters. That is the landing burn. It is just a single engine burn, the center E9 engine. Each one of these M1D engines have about 190,000 pounds of thrust. So that is enough to slow the vehicle down just in time for landing. And you can see the coast of Florida in the background. But boosters are transonic. Now that landing burn coming up here in just about 20 seconds or so. Landing burn will last about 20 seconds long. Again, we are scheduled to land on landing zone one and landing Bruce, zone two. Landing burn. And there are those landing burns have begun on the side boosters. So let's watch as they touch down. Stage two is on thermal guidance. Stage two FTS is saved. Booster landing leg deploy. And what an incredible sight to see as we watch the Boom, side done. boosters touchdown for landing. That confirms successful landing of both Falcon Heavy side boosters on landing zone one and landing zone two. Now with these two side boosters, this marks the 163rd and 164th overall successful landing of an orbital class rocket. It's also the 25th landing on landing zone one and the sixth landing on landing and zone two. And with successful confirmation of our side boosters landing, that will bring today's webcast to a close. Insertion. Now, we'd like to thank the United States Space Force for entrusting us with today's mission. Thank you to the Range and the Federal Aviation Administration for licensing today's launch. And we'd like to thank all of you, our viewers, for tuning in. Now, if you're interested, head over to our website and social media platforms for updates on our next missions and milestones. We hope that you all enjoy the rest of your weekend. And we'll see you again soon.